You are now checked in to Stand Up New York Labs. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is All right, we are back <coughs> with Tuesdays with Stories. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm doing you, the intro you here. Didn't Good warn Lord. me. Oh, it didn't know I said 214. Oh, I didn't know what it meant. I even started late. I All just, right. Uh, ate, a, ate a bug. Another one of our awkward intros. You never know how to start this puppy. It's it's really the most awkward feeling. But uh, we're here now, and uh, it's a cold winter day in the Big Apple. Uh, I'm Mark Norman, your host, along with my companion, compadre, and... Comedian. Joe List, everybody. Hello. It's actually uh, pretty mild today. I don't mean to quarrel it, right off the bat. I agree. It was nice. Yeah, it's pretty warm out today. It's nice. It's an unseasonably warm December day. I went out in a big big jacket, went home, switched to a lighter jacket. Oh, wow. Well, I, all I got is the big dog. I got that big-ass North Face jacket. <laughs> that is a doozy, by the Somebody way. Somebody <laughs> left it at my roommate, Jason Cantor's Bar, the 13th Step. <laughs> Very offensive title. And uh, someone left it there. Gave it to me. I got it uh, fumigated, whatever you do to a jacket. And it's like a $300 jacket. I could go out without pants with that jacket on. What'd you do? You threw a, like a roach bomb in there? Between you and me and the listeners, I actually didn't do anything. I knew you didn't. <laughs> Everybody said, you got to go get it cleaned. You don't know who owned this thing. And I said, all right, you got it. Let and me... then I've been telling everyone for two years that I had it defumigated. Let me tell you this. First of all, I don't know if you can defumigate clothing. <laughs> whatever. But secondly... Everything I own and I'm wearing right now is from a thrift store. And I put that stuff on in the store and I walk out with it on my naked skin. And I've been doing it my whole life. I love it. Yeah. And as a kid, I remember putting a hat on and somebody going, don't put it on. It might have lice. I said, get out of the way. I'm putting this hat on. I put every goddamn hat on I saw. I don't care if it was roadkill or what. The coonskin hat, whatever. How about I was, I was obsessed with wrestling when I was, for like a brief period, 88 to 92. Ooh. Ted DiBiase would react these things. We put the money in the mouth. Oh, yeah. Let's stick money in I've ate money my whole life. i got a bunch of quarters sitting in they my liver do. right now. Liver? I, I think people want you to eat money. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's think about it. Gold coins, those chocolates. Come on. You're telling me something. <laughs> That's a little out there, by the way. That's yeah. one of my conspiracy theories. People want us to eat money. <laughs> <laughs> why wouldn't they make it in the shape of, you know, turkey breasts? And Why rectangle? You don't need anything rectangle. Yeah. Uh, Is that an agreement or an argument? <laughs> I, I thought you were agreeing with me, and I, I realized that you were. Oh, boy. Oh, but yeah, yeah. So I got so, the jacket for free. Yeah. I never defumigated it. Don't Who, defume. What, what can you do? It's a jacket. <laughs> it's it's the same as when those guys say... Germs are crazy. Oh, they're em. crazy. You need them. How about this? They're part of life. Purell is grosser to me than uh, the fucking subway pole. Does People it like, have to come in semen form? <laughs> you, touched, you touched the pole. You want Purell? No, Purell's disgusting. Right. That's a good point. How about, how about this? You, you get a taco at the truck, and they go, whoa, 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 they put uh, AIDS in there. <laughs> oh, so you're telling me they go out of their way to get AIDS in here? That costs money to buy AIDS. How about the old thing, the weed? I was always afraid of smoking weed when I was a kid, because people were like, you never know, someone could spike it. They, oh, they yeah. Might. Who's going to put a more expensive drug in a cheaper drug? Good point. Uh, Tom Dustin and I used to talk about this, and, and he, I was like, you got to do that as a bit, and it never worked as a bit. And every time I talked to him, I'm like, you got to do that. It's That's hilarious. A, I like it. Someone's just putting free PCP right. in a joint. Yeah, and passing it out to strangers. Right, right. It doesn't doesn't make sense. No. Anyways, I got the jacket. That, speaking of Tom Dustin. Yes, well, he comes up a lot on here. Yeah, dear friend. Tomorrow, we might have to start recording these so they come out the next week here. I would like that. Yeah, we gotta, we got to start doing that because I want to do a Christmas. we got to talk about Christmas. I know, now it's going to be, uh, this is going to come out in the summer. Aaron, we want this one to come out Monday if possible. Can we do that? Tuesday, I mean. Is, what, that, what? is that doable? Oh, wow. Who knew? Yeah, all right. So happy Christmas, everybody. Yeah. It's Christmas Eve. Happy holidays. Right now, if you're listening, it's Christmas Eve. Oh, that's great. You're probably not listening because it's Christmas Eve. Well, there's nothing to do on Christmas Eve. That's a fallacy. Uh, I, think a, I think that means penis. Phallic? Phallic. See? Oh, <laughs> all right. Boy. Well, I'm Mike Gavlin, and uh, <laughs> we're happy to be here. 
Anyways, we're going to Tom Dustin's house. He's yeah. got the rock band set up. We oh, always play boy. rock band. Love the rock band. And uh, we were doing a mic check before we came on air. That's the best way to do it. And uh, you were making me laugh. And uh, one of the hardest I've ever laughed in my life, we're playing rock band. Oh, boy. At Tom, the Everett House of Comedy, we call it. Yes. And uh, you were singing, and you're not a good singer. Well, we should clarify that this is after 38 beers and 24 joints. We were we were not uh, not put together well. We were okay. very uh, unreasonably unreasonably inebriated. But, oh yeah. But nevertheless, I don't picture you as a good singer. Am I wrong about that? I can't imagine you you're correct. A tune. Correct about me being a bad singer. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. You don't seem like a guy who. Keeps the tune real well. Well, hey, that's not too bad. There. I'm amazing. Boy, that was... A... I only brought this up to let people know that I can sing. Is that Randy Newman over there? Randy Newman, one of the great, great Song comedy writers, writers of great. all time. Funny guy. And, uh, all right, so anyways, we were playing rock band, and uh, Tom Dustin, this is the hardest I've ever laughed in my life, Tom Dustin let you know that you don't, the word accuracy is not important. Uh-huh. It's just the tone. Uh-huh. So then you were singing... Like uh, Jeremy by Pearl Jam, like this. Ooh, tough song. Dirty black cunt, <laughs> suck my dick, oh, and yabba right. doo doo, wet floor, whatever you were saying. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I about that. you were just singing the most random things, and we were drunk and stoned. I've never laughed so hard in my entire <laughs> life. Well, I only have one tone. If you hear my voice, it's just, ah, that's yeah, all yeah. I got. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar. So I can't really go notes. Right, right. But uh, it, it was really great because uh, it was like, yeah, yeah, the lyrics don't matter. So you were just making up your own. Oh, yeah. And you weren't even making up lyrics like a story. You were just saying random things. Right, mostly and, offensive. Uh, mostly, yeah, racial and uh, anti-Semitic. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's our humor. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Where's that Randy Newman song? Oh, uh, boy. So uh, that, I wanted to bring that up and talk about that. But we're going up there to Boston uh well, actually, the show will have already have passed. Yeah. The show is two days from now. So thanks for coming out to the Baseball Tavern, everybody. Yeah. came out. Boy, you all looked terrific. And, yeah. Uh, you didn't have to show us your tits like that. Yeah, that uh, really threw me. <laughs> but I'm, I appreciate it. Uh, and what, what else was going on there, buddy well, boy? I just did a show at, uh, speaking of tits. I, just I love sh- tits. Just did a show at Joe's Pub last night. Tell me about this Joe's Pub, because it sounds made up. You told me a little bit. I got a lot of fun facts, if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready, baby. I was born ready, Jack. So Joe's Pub, it's called Joe's Public. used to be the first public library in New York City. Now it's a performing space, uh, and it's got a restaurant slash bar upstairs called The Library. Beautiful, swanky. It's amazing how many shows we do, and we see, like, oh, there's four people in the audience. Oh, boy, it's a light show. These shows, people come out in droves. They have to be turned away at the door just because it's an event. It's a Schumer taping. It's an Amy Schumer show taping. Boy, she is blown up. Blown up. Like the world trade. Oh, yeah. Well, those were more hit, really. Well, it was a lyric uh, from uh, Biggie Small. Time to get paid, blow up like the world trade. Wow, what year was that? Like, 93. It was after the first bombing. Oh, so it was bombed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was thinking 9-11. Yeah. Got it. Blow up like the World Trade. Oh. Which, it really didn't blow up. It just like it was like an explosion. Uh-huh. And it remained pretty well intact. So he, yeah. I guess it didn't blow up too much. Right. Eh, he probably needed the trade rhyme. Yeah, it was pretty good. But I remember after 9-11, people were like, whoa, how about ah, this? Oh, yes. Soothsayer. So, uh, yeah, and it's all beautiful girls. That's all it is in the crowd, because they, they think they're going to be on TV because of the reaction shots. Oh. So the front row is just models, blonde models with, like, cleavage and, you know, dress oh. the nines, the tight, those tight goddamn leathery pants women are wearing now. I fucking love it. Yes, it's insane. Le- I, you see leather skirt. My girlfriend wants a leather skirt, and I, I was, Good. I, I fucking, my, my tongue fell out, and I was like, get, get a leather skirt. I'll buy you a leather skirt. I don't know yes. where you go to get a leather skirt. I'd like to buy the girlfriend those pants. I don't know if she'd wear them. Hot pants, they call them. Is that what that is? I think so. That seems like something from the 80s. I know, but I think it's coming back. I think that's the thing. I thought hot pants meant short. No. Oh, all right. I'm trying new things. I like it. If if you know what the hot pants are, call yeah, in. Yeah, call in. Let us know what a hot pant is. And if you were bothered by Joe's no there, call in as well. And why is it pants? There's only one pair. <laughs> uh, hot pant. Why is it a pair? It's one thing. I think it's the leg. Ah, yes. <laughs> but underwear doesn't even make sense. There's holes, but there's a third hole for the dick. Also, a shirt isn't a pair of shirt. There's two sleeves. <laughs> it's really ridiculous. Has this ever been covered in comedy? It should have been. I think it has. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Quite a bit. But yeah. Back these... when hot pants were hot. 
these TV tapings are just, they're such a treat for guys like us because we do these rough shows and clubs and get heckled and do the road and yelled at. And these are just like, you get yelled. If you bring out, you take your phone out of your pocket, you get thrown out. It's free booze. Yeah. It's free food. They pamper you. You're wearing makeup. They steam your shirt. Everything is like, you got a green room. It's so crazy what show business can be. Yeah, we're so rarely pampered. Very rarely pampered, especially as a comic. I mean, comedians, uh, they, I, I forget who said it, but we are the warriors of show business. Yeah, no pamp. No pamp. <laughs> Ooh, sometimes I say a thing just so you'll say it, and I get a la- I, I got to laugh at it. Oh, oh, here's a here's a, a nugget. So Please. the uh, the closer of the show is this woman named Bridget Everett, who's Schumer uh, doesn't close the show. No, no, like this, uh, she just gets the sh- gets the hour in and gets off, and then uh, somebody closes it. Like, Weird. Yeah, it's a big burlesque dancer lady. She's, oh, she's amazing. It's so not a comedian. No, no, no. I no. got you. It's just a way to wrap it up. This is very <clears throat> memorable. Put a button on it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's a Boy, smart idea. Boy, it sounds idea. like a real show business show. You yeah. had you had a couple nice nights, buddy. It was great. It was great. A lot of industry there, and a lot of people kissing your ass. Boy, boy, it is hard not to be jealous of your life. It is oh. really something. Well, I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I'm terrified the whole time. No, nope, doesn't help. Okay, uh, right. <laughs> threw it out there. Uh, so because I'm terrified too, but I'm at LOL. <laughs> <laughs> are you wor- are you really worried at LOL? I, I'm worried about everything. I'm worried about everything. Uh, too. It's, it's very. Uh, I don't mean to digress. Yeah. I'm worried about any commitment, not not uh, commitments. Yes. I'm not worried about commitment. I, I like my girlfriend's great. I love being with her. Yes. Commitments, something on the calendar. Oh, dentist, a show, it's the, the podcast. Worst. It's the worst. Anything. I want to do nothing. But if that calendar is empty, you got to be honest, it's it's also Panic terrifying. Attacks. Yeah. Panic attacks. So you can't win. Commitments are like women. You need them and you hate them. There I don't you hate go. them. I don't hate women. I know the you phone's mean, no. just lit up. I oh, love boy. women, but uh, you get it. I'm going to get a shoe thrown at me. We have a red phone for uh, misogyny, <laughs> and that one's going nuts. And a black phone for racial, ironically. we got a purple phone for the gays, but yes. they're too busy calling Duck Dynasty guys. Ooh. Quack, 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 quack. Uh, so here's my uh, here's my kerfuffle. So I uh, I'm in the green room and you know I'm nervous. I'm terrified as usual, anxious, whatever. And I'm sitting there and I'm trying to start a conversation. And it's this Bridget Everett woman who's a fantastic performer and her two backup dancers. And I didn't know they were backup dancers. Oh, wow. So I meet them and I say, Hey, how you doing? How you doing? And uh, she walks out of the room, so I'm like, oh, crap, I'm in the room with these two guys. we got nothing to talk oh, about. Oh, they're guys. Yeah, yeah, it's two men. Oh, I'm picturing ladies. Two men in suits. Oof. And I'm like, oh, boy, this is awkward. So I go, ah, how do you guys know Bridget? What are you guys, the manager, her manager, an agent? And they were like, uh, no, no, we're the backup dancers. But they seem a little little pissed off by that. Oh, boy. And I was like, oh, sorry. I, I didn't know. I just assumed, you know, you guys were the managers because you look like you're in suits. And like, no, we're, we're doing a backup dance routine. It's pretty funny. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then... Blah, blah, blah. And then later, I get out of the green room, and I talk to the tour manager, because he's like the only other normal person there who doesn't work at Comedy Central, Mm -hmm. you know? And I said, uh, yeah, I just met the backup dancers. And he's like, yeah, you know, one of them is uh, Ad-Rock from the Beastie Boys. What? And I was like, I just asked a Beastie Boy if he was her manager. Oh, my God. How embarrassing is that? I grew up with them. Well, how embarrassing that he's doing backup dancing? What's he doing? It's a, he's a friend. It's just, they're old friends and it's just like a fun thing for him. He's got nothing to do and. Boy. Might as well come be on TV, you know? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, did you, did you chat him up a little bit? I did, but I was, I was kind of in a hole with him because of that backup thing. Yeah, I mean, the agent thing. Say, you know, I'm nervous. You know how it is. Yeah, but at, once he told me, I looked at him, I was like, "That's of course it's a Beastie Boy. Look at his face. Oh, my God. Right, right, right. But, yeah. Wow, the Beastie Boys. I know. It was crazy. Boy, what's that uh, noise? You're just jealous it's the Beastie Boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. We, we did it. It's a sabotage. Wow. Oh, I love sabotage. Spike Jones. Yes. Who you also have met. I did, but that was a little smoother. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I am not good with the meeting of people. No, me either. Yeah. Spike, Spike Jones was at the comedy show the other night. You went over and said hello. I did, yes. And then I was interrupted by Jenna Friedman. Oh, wow. Spike Jones's new movie, uh, Her, is supposed to be amazing. I'm oh, really yeah? Looking forward to it. Yeah, H-E-R? Yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. the one where uh, Joaquin Phoenix falls in love with an operating system. And it's supposed to be really spectacular. Boy, he's good, Joaquin. Joaquin Phoenix? Oh, my God, he's amazing. He is yeah, good. Yeah, he is really tremendous. I saw him in something. Oh, have you seen the movie Parenthood? With Steve Martin. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite jokes is in there. Great movie. This is my son. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hilarious. Yes. That That's is one funny. of the funniest lines ever. <laughs> he named his son Cool. Yeah. Oof. How embarrassing. That was Thomas Hulse. Who's that? He was Amadeus. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, he was the dad. But uh, <clears throat> Joaquin is in that movie. Right, He's right. the young kid with the porn tapes. Yeah. That took me, me and the girlfriend were watching it, and she was like, who is this kid? I know him. And I was like, ah, you don't know anybody. What are you talking about? And then it turned out she looked it up, and it was him. I just saw Jake Gyllenhaal in a movie as a kid. And I forget what it was, but I, I recognized him. City was Slickers. Like, That's the one. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I got that. We just watched it the other day. We thought it was good. And you watch that movie again, it is a fucking P.U. Is that right? It stinks on I remember, ice. I remember it being pretty good. I loved it. It sucks. Bruno Kirby, I love that. One of my oh, favorite actors. I love actors. Kirby. What a name, too. P- P- Pete Clemenza. Come again? He played he played young Pete Clemenza in Who's The Godfather that? Part Two. Ah, Bevilacqua, <laughs> Mr. Bevilacqua. <laughs> we went, we mentioned race earlier, and we usually uh, Us? we usually we usually dabble in race. And boy, I got one that's really gonna piss you off, buddy boy. Lay it on me, and, Negro. Uh, it annoyed me. Uh, we we do a show the other day. Me and our, our dear friend Sam Marill, one of our favorite people, and Good uh, egg. and depending on what day it is, he's one of our favorite people. And uh, yeah. Uh, this other guy I don't know, and, and even if I did, I wouldn't say his name because I don't want to. I don't want to trash talk here on the show. That's not what this show's about. No, thank you. But uh, we do a show. It's a benefit for the Filipino kids or whatever. And I, I don't know how much money we made, Sam and me and this kid whose name I can't remember. What happened to the Filipinos? They uh, got hit with a tsunami again. The biggest one in history. That was like three weeks ago. It's getting old, fellas. <laughs> The island fucking sunk. Oh, if that boy. happened in America, we'd have tattoos all over. Everyone, you, even you would have a tattoo. Tattoo, Filipino, fucking whatever date. Oh, you know what I mean? I was in Katrina. I got no tats. Well, maybe not you, but uh, right. a lot of douches have a big wave coming over their mom. It's like a heart. It oh says, wow! Yeah, do you think? I have one of those where it says "Roll Tide." <laughs> okay. All right, continue. People have tattoos of the Superdome with a you know pair of balls, and it says "fucking <laughs> we're too tough" or right. some more shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Or how many tattoos are there of eagles ripping out of people's backs with the nine eleven thing? Or yeah, something? Ugh, that's appalling. <laughs> I've always been a t shirt guy. Yes, I don't need a tattoo. Get a t shirt. You yeah. take it off, you wash it, you put it back on. Maybe you don't wash it, no. depending on where you bought it. Yeah, I don't. You don't defumigate. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, anyways, this kid he does his set. He comes up. I'm like, "How's the crowd?" Yeah, and he goes, "Ah, they're real white." Ah, uh. <laughs> I go. Did you say white? <laughs> yeah. And he goes, yeah, they're real white. You know, like negative. Yeah, yeah, they suck. They're white. And I'm like, what does that mean, white? He goes, you know, rich, uptight, white. I'm like, well, that, that's the most racist. He's, he's white, by the way. Right, right. It's the most racing, racist, self-hating, fucking idiotic. It, it's racist, and it doesn't make sense. Yes. Like, white crowds are all bad. Yes. Terrible crowd. They're, oh, boy, a bunch of white people out there. And then, for the record, this isn't us being bitter white people. This is us pointing out an injustice. Right, right. Yes. yes. I just exactly. want to get that out there. Exactly. I, I would be upset if he was like, ah, they're black. They're a real yeah, black crowd. Yeah. Which normally, by the way, is a compliment. It's like a nice thing. Oh, they're hot. They're a black crowd. Oh, interesting. It can be great. Yeah. Well, if it goes bad, it's bad. Right, right. The black crowd. Movie theater might be a bad time to hear that. Yeah, but we're talking stand-up, baby. Okay, okay. Black, black crowds, it's very extreme. If they hate you, it's a, it's oh, really a bad oh, scene. Oh, it's ugly. There's, a, there's booing and there's th- shit being thrown. And, yeah. But if they love you, it's fucking, it's wacky. It's, oh, it's bananas. They it, go nuts. It's insane. It's like a Baptist church. <laughs> right. I've never been, but it, you sure. <laughs> Make it a point to go. I might dabble. Dabble. So it says they're very white. What is that? That's, that's fucking horrifying. White that's is terrible. somehow, it's become an insult. Yeah, and, and rich and uptight. Like, white people are just all rich right. and all uptight. Yeah, we all I'm, have boats. I'm poor. I am uptight, but I'm very poor, I'm not, but I, I'm not uptight when it comes to comedy. No, you're not uptight. Very offended. By the way, there were, I go down there. It's one of these things you can't see the crowd because yeah. it's like too packed. I go down there. It's diverse. Ah. There's like 30 people. There's like six blacks, four Asians, like nine gay people it's in the village so it sounds like this guy just sucks at comedy and he's looking for an out and he just wants to be the cool guy right i don't like what like it's become so cool to uh. be like, first of all i hate white people that say white people yes uh, white white people what uh. you mean us you, you mean us what you. Are you talking about yeah self-loathing white very annoying a white crowd i'm gonna say this and we're gonna lose a couple of sponsors <laughs> All right, so Lipton tea. Oh, be responsible. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that was horrible. Uh, um. Okay, I make fun of every race: white, black, Latino, Jew, whatever. This is my theory. You know, you see these BuzzFeed's articles. You know, it's like top twenty-five whitest moments, top twenty-eight 
white people of all time. It's like all these white, everything's a white joke, white joke, which I'm fine with. I'm not insulted. I'm only insulted because you're not doing it to everyone. Right. How condescending is that? Hey, we can take it, but don't make fun of them. Ooh, their, their little brains can't compute irony. Right. You know? Right. That's, to me, that's insulting. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, don't make fun of blacks. Uh, it, it gets ugly. No, make fun of them. Make fun of, like when I was in gym class, we made fun of everybody but the retarded kid. You know why we didn't make fun of the retarded kid? Because he was retarded. Right. It would be mean because it would be true. Hey, you're retarded. You call me retarded, it doesn't hurt. So if you don't make fun of black people, you're basically saying they can't get, they can't get it. I got it. I don't think do we lost any sponsors. Okay. We got sponsors. I'm just, but it, is it ever going to change? Are we well, going to do this forever? It's just now changing for the worst. It's like this. Yeah. Right we're going now, backwards. as we speak, this Duck Dynasty thing is a thing. And here's the problem. The Duck Dynasty, I mean, it's going to be a few days old by the time you hear this. Well, maybe only three days old. This guy, first of all, his comments weren't even that bad. I don't know if you well, followed I, the story. I, I didn't see anything about it. Some guy from the Duck Dynasty, I've never seen the show, but it's supposed to be the biggest show in it's the history huge. of shows. And he said, he did an interview in GQ magazine, and he says, uh, you know, uh, gay people, he's basically like, I don't get it, bro. He's like, I don't, don't you think a vagina would be more appealing than a man's <laughs> anus? Ah, Which hilarious. I'm like, yes, I feel the same way. But right. I understand that people are fucking born this way. Think and it's differently, yeah. That's the way it's got to be. So, right. you know, that's the way they think, and they don't understand that I want to fucking... People don't understand that I want my, a girl to spit in my mouth when we're having sex. Right, that seems right. weird. So, or people don't understand not defumigating a ju- jacket that right. you found at a bar. Also, women want penis. Are they weirdos? You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. That's, uh, people just wired differently. It's, yeah, exactly. One is not right or wrong. It's just right. how you are, yeah. So he says this. I don't even think he says it's wrong in the, in the quotes. But he, then he says it's a sin. It says in the sin it's a Bible, which... The Bible, uh, and again, we're going to lose more sponsors, maybe even fans. Yeah. A lot of that's pretty silly, <laughs> the yeah. Bible. There's a bush talking. And from what I've never read the Bible, but uh, what I understand, they do say homosexuality is a sin in the Bible. I believe it is they do. in there. They also say shrimp is bad. Is that right? Yeah, but no one ever talks about that. Oh, People wow. eat shrimp every day. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds of nonsense. I believe there's a talking bush from what yeah, I've understood. Yeah, or burning at least. And a guy walking on water. And, yeah, uh, people pick a, and choose. A lot of nonsense in there. And evidently they do say gay is a, a sin, but anyone that takes their shit from a, a, a book that was written 20,000 years ago is not... Yeah, all that. and I'm not shitting if you believe in God. No, I, you know, I, no, I, no. I, I'm, I'm a spiritual guy. But the Bible is uh, all metaphor anyway, you know, like this... Adam and Eve. I don't think Adam and Eve. No one thinks that really happened. I think it's just, some people do. Though. Well, some people do, but some people think Noah's Ark is yeah, a thing. I think it's all metaphor. You know, it's all like stories that have a that teach you something. Of course, yes, yes. But we're, we're normal people. So, anyways, he he says right. that. But now A and E has suspended him from a few episodes. He can't be on the show. And CNN. I was just watching the news. CNN is doing one full hour. Five people on there, all talking about this. <sighs> Jesus. This, this is what the the least problem, the smallest problem of all of this is that some dude, some duck hunter, right, some from I- Louisiana, some idiot, hick. doesn't understand homosexuality. Right. Why is that? A problem. Yes. Let alone the biggest problem. Right. The real problem is that fucking CNN sees this as news, and CNN is not to blame. It's that America wants to watch that. It gets ratings. People want to watch that, and people are like, why is CNN not covering North Korea and climate change and fucking the Afghan war that's still happening? Right. They're, they're, we're, we're covering this gay guy, because that's who. That's what people want to watch. Right. The, the, the smallest, most, the thing that matters the least... Is some maniac who fucking shoots ducks for a living. <laughs> it's like, ah, I'd rather fuck a pussy than an asshole. Yeah. Well, so would I. So would I, of course. Who gives a shit what this guy thinks? As long as, as long as we're progressing politically with homosexuals, they can vote and yes. get married yes. and fucking, and, and whatever the fuck else. Who cares if this fucking lunatic doesn't like it? Who I gives a, a shit about that guy? I have a theory. I think I know what it is. Hit me with it, baby. All right. I think. People have these little fears, they have these thoughts in their own head, so when they hear someone else saying them, they go, oh boy, fingers pointed at him, he's the douche. Right, right. I have these little fears too, but no one knows. Put it all on him. When Eddie Murphy picks up a hooker, and everybody goes, oh, that's appalling. No, everybody's thought about picking up a hooker. Right. He's not not a... a, I've dabbled. Yeah, you've dabbled. He's not a deviant, he's just a a human being. Right. We all suppress these feelings, and then when somebody goes... Yeah, this black guy uh, really scared me that day. Everybody goes, oh, how could you say that? You've been scared before, too. Black right. people have been scared by black people. I'm just saying it's 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 just a uh, it's a get it off me. It's on him now, so right. that means I'm a hero. Right. It's, it's, it's nonsense, and I, and I like I, – I understand, too. I think that people in the homosexual community might argue 
that uh, you know we can't have people. This people will grow up thinking we we have tolerance. But I'm like, this guy's not a fucking important figure, or he shouldn't be. We make him important, I guess, because people want to this dumb show. show. Yeah. But uh, I don't know what my point was there. But uh, the, point the real is, problem is that this is, not that this is a news story. Right. Right. Yeah. That's that's the real uh, tragedy or whatever. And then I hate it because politically and uh, uh, philosoph- philosophically, I'm sort of a liberal. I, I, I'm more of a centrist, I suppose, but certainly left leaning. Right. You believe in gay marriage? You're for marijuana? Gay marriage, of course. Uh, marijuana, and I think I think marijuana should be legalized. I think that just makes sense. And yeah. I'm, uh, I, I'm concerned about the environment. I'm against war and. Uh, I think that, you know, military spending is a little bit out of control, right, and we don't right. need bases in 58 different countries. I uh-huh. think it's all very, uh, that's all sort of uh, insane. And, but uh, what sucks is the all the PC stuff comes from the left. Yeah, that's it, it's right. It's not the, it, both ends are fucking so silly. This is not a story, and I apologize for getting political here, but it, it's frustrating that the political correctness all comes from the left. That's who, like, true. We, 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 we must let gays marry, and Which we don't want war, and uh, you can't say yes. you don't like gay people. Right. We're like, well, what the fuck? He has to be suspended off of his show now? I what, know, it's that's insane. That's fucking asinine. It's insane. What happened to free... Why are the people who so support free speech are also so against it? it it's, it's very, it's, very silly. It's very um, hypocritical. It's embarrassing, and it, it makes you have to separate yourself from that side of, right. of, of the spectrum. And in ways, it, it's a bit racist, what they're doing. Like, like let's say you said, hey, we got to block the borders. So, you know, too many illegal aliens are coming in. Oh, oh, oh you, don't, you don't like Mexican people? No, I just don't want to live... In not America. If Polish people were coming over or uh, millions of Germans were coming in, I don't want to learn German. Right. It's not about the color of the skin, but they're all going, you hate brown people. No, I just hate learning another language. I hate not living in America. Well, one thing, I, I haven't followed the, uh, i, I got to be honest, I don't I don't follow politics as closely as it may seem after that rant, and I don't watch the news too much. <laughs> I, don't, I don't either. I don't watch the news too much. But I think I've heard some theories about the immigration thing. I don't know who's on what side. I don't know how it works. But with the immigration, it seems like America was based on that when we needed people. Right. Give us your tired, give your hungry. We needed people to come and have an industry. Yes. But once you have whatever it is, 300 million, 600 million, however many people are here. We got a lot. We got too many people now. Well. No more. You're going to change. That's the same with the, the amendments. Right. Where we're like, the same thing with, 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 with guns. Yeah, it says my right. But right, it's like, well, right. this is cha- you have to be able to change a little yeah. bit because times have changed. And now we weren't talking about machine guns. People have machine guns. Right. You know? Also, back then when people came here, give us your tired, your poor, your hungry, whatever, people assimilated. You know, people turn, all right, I'm coming to America. I'm going to work and make uh, the American dream. Now people are like, I'm going to come to America and, uh, you know, mooch. Right. And I, I know I'm turning into Limbaugh oh, here. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm just saying, uh, I don't care who moves here. I don't care what color you are. I just think, you know, if you want to come, if you want to come to the party, figure out where the coats go. Get the DJ, you know, uh, serve drinks. Right. Help out. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh boy. boy. Well, well, this, this got crazy. <laughs> Sorry. I, Glad this is coming out on Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah, well, I better put my pants back on. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, that boy. Was a doozy. It got uh, crazy. All that started was that one guy's comment. How's the crowd? <laughs> oh, boy, I saw another race uh, fight on the... Uh, but no, this wasn't, it wasn't... I don't think it was racial, but maybe it turned racial. Can I tell you about it? Please. Uh, this guy, uh, the, the N-word was said, but one of them was Latino, which I guess is okay. That, again, all comes down to shade. I don't understand that. Asian folks and Indian folks just say the N-word. Oh, oh Asian? Yeah, yeah, I see Asian people. No. Yes. Well, first of all, India is in Asia. I'm talking about uh, Japanese, Chinese, Korean. I've seen it. Oh, is that right? Yes. Wow. What's up, nigga? Is that right? I've seen an Asian guy. I swear to God. I can't picture that at all. I think if you just dress hip hoppy or <laughs> right. whatever it is, that uh-huh. makes me sound old and white. Yeah, a little. You can just say that. If you have like a flat brimmed hat off to the side, you can just be like, what's up, nigga? Really? I think so. You just got to dress the part. Huh. It's fucking crazy. Who knew it came down to a uniform? I think it's a uniform. Wow. And if it, because the N word, even if I just said what I said, and I had like a, a fucking pointy white hat. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to say that. It's, it's uniform. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to say a lot of things. I'm in a t-shirt and jeans, so I can, I can say it like that, I think. Interesting. I think. I hope. I don't know. The Asian. phones are fucking, have never been so uh, lit up. This phone broke. <laughs> 
I I don't I don't know. I'd like to get a I don't I'd like to get a a, a black man in here just to kind of quiz him on this stuff. I know we there was three in here when we got here. We let him go. Well, three. That's a bit. <laughs> let him go. Overwhelming. Jeez. But uh, yeah, no, you're right. Well, well but Asian. anyways, Puerto Rican I've seen. Yeah, Puerto Asian. Ricans. They just say it, and I've heard because they were also oppressed or something. Hmm. But so know. were the Irish. And the Jews. Yeah, and the Jews, horrifically. Yeah. So I don't, I don't really get that. It's color. I'm telling you, it's all color. I don't, I don't exactly get that. But, you know, but maybe it's not for me to get. Maybe right. I don't get to make the rules or whatever it is. But, uh. No, you don't. Anyways. So does, what happened? Really? Oh, so, oh, there was just a fight on the train. I missed the beginning because I was listening to music. But you know how in New York, all of a sudden you hear something happening where oh, you're yeah. like, oh, something's going on. Yeah, yeah. You, you sort of sense it before you realize it. But we're on the train. I'm sitting on the train and, uh, a big, big black guy gets in a fight with a small Puerto Rican guy who had a bunch of packages, a bunch of boxes. He was doing some sort of work or hauling. He might have been homeless. I don't know. But he had a bunch of stuff he was hauling, and he was getting off the train. He was like, get out of my way. And the guy's like, you fucking got you out of my way. That's uh -huh. how it's I missed the very beginning. Yeah. But the Puerto Rican fella, or, or I should say Latina. I'm, I don't know if he's Puerto Rican. Right. Latina guy gets off the... Uh, the train with the, all these big boxes and he's like fuck you man and the black guy's like yeah fuck you he's like fuck you he's like i'm standing here you fuck you yeah and they start going back and forth and then uh, the puerto rican goes guy goes why don't you get off the fucking train i'll show you what's up get off the fucking train and the doors are open the whole time the black guy's standing holding the doors oh, open. oh boy now all these like white women are getting mad at him they're like hey i gotta get to work you fucking uh... jerk and he's like <laughs> and he's like fuck you he's like get on the train and they're fighting but neither one they both have some place to be. Yeah, so neither yeah, one's yeah. getting off. The so guy on the train, the black like, guy is in the right. Well, he's on the train, but I like the Puerto Rican guy is the one that's like, let's stand here. We, you can fight on the platform. Right. There's nobody here. Everyone wow. just moved. Yeah. You come to me. Uh huh. And the black guy's like, no, come on the train, which is ridiculous. That the guy is just get ridiculous. off the train. He's not getting back on the train. But right. it's also ridiculous to think that he's going to get off the train. They both have places to be. That's hilarious. So you can't just fight. If you fight, you're late. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 So they fight. This is the best part. The Puerto Rican guy finally goes. Wipe the book is out your nose, bro. Ah. And I look over, and the black guy, his nose is all wet. He's got, like, snot. He's just ah. living his life like that. Oh, boy. And it was hilarious, because it was, like, elementary school, where you yeah. get personal. Yeah, well, you got boogers. Wow, good call, Porty. <laughs> wipe the book is out your face. Oh, and then he, he did say the N-word. He said, wipe ah. the book is out your face, nigga. Ooh. And I was like, man, this is getting crazy. But I think the Puerto Rican guy was tougher or crazier. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? He was yeah. he was really throwing the N-word out there and making fun of boogers and was pushing packages. Anyone that's pushing boxes on a train is Yeah. Strange. Was it clear he was Latino? Very Latino. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Bandana, the whole business. Oh, wow. Bandana. I yeah. don't fuck with a bandana. Very nerve-wracking. I see a bandana, I go the other way. Yeah. Even at a store, just see one for sale. What if it's on the end of a stick? That I'm fine with. Yeah. Like a guy riding the rails? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, you know who. Hobo. Woody Guthrie. Yeah, I was going to say Hobo Joe, but I, yeah, Woody Guthrie's better. Boy, I feel like we might be losing fans. Is it too much? Write in. Call in. I said the N-word, uh, but I said it in But you're uh, saying you're, a, you're chronicling a, a story. Yeah, I am chronicling. And I rarely use the word chronicling. Yeah. And I didn't rare. feel right about it. A lot, of, a lot of big words being thrown out there. Well, here's my thing. It's like a very special episode. This is. This is a heated, baby. Tuesdays heated. Uh, Christmas spirit is high in this episode. Yep. I just want to say... I. I think we both are liberal people. We both, uh, you know, are not racist. We're both intelligent people. We, I think it's a sign of respect to not be one of these just sappy, you know, like, oh, yeah, you're a minority. I'm so sorry. Blah, 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 all that shit. Like, to me, it's, we're, I think we're, we're treating minorities more like people to I'm, actually be honest and, and respectful. not just a group. I'm trying to treat, Everyone equally. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't want to, like, pussyfoot and, you know, whatever, just, you know, I don't know, glad hand and all that bullshit. Like, let's have a real conversation. Well, I used to get, we might have even talked about this on the show before, and I apologize, it's hard to remember, and I don't listen to the show after we do it, uh, but we appreciate you listening to it, but uh, Thank I'll be damned if I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, I lived in Harlem for a year, uh -huh. and I remember uh, I would I would I would report about what's going on in in Harlem, and people would call me racist. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, there's people just yelling all the time, and people just throw their trash. It's just trash everywhere. People just I watch people just throw their garbage mm -hmm. on the ground, and my buddy was like, you're a fucking are you racist. That's yeah, racist. Right, I'm like, right. what are you talking? I'm just this is what I'm just telling you what a thing I saw. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm living in the heart of Black America. Right, right. And, and I'm telling you what's going on. Then my buddy, one of my buddies, who would who would make jokes about me being from Boston, which uh -huh. drives me crazy. I'm sure you get it being from the South. Oh yeah, all the time. Makes me crazy. I always say, where's the part of the country with no racial right. history? Right. Which part of the country is that? Yeah. L.A. 
Ugh. Fucking uh, the South, you know what I mean? Right. Indiana, b- birthplace of the Ku Klux Klan, Detroit, race riots. You know, there's, oh, yeah. There's some race issues. Yes. In, in this country, particularly. All over the world, actually. And yeah. America gets a bad rap. Europeans are worse. They're throwing fucking banana Bananas, peels. Yeah. yeah. It was just a race riot in Jerusalem when they would beat up black people. Yeah, horrible. But yeah. everyone talks about America as this racist place. But you're right. like, well, it's pretty bad everywhere. Yeah. Have you seen our, we have a black president, like the hip hop world is like one of our biggest you know, cultural things. We got tons right. of stuff. All the athletes. All right. Uh, wow, that microphone is amazing. We're picking up what's happening three rooms away. Oh, yeah. They're probably all up in arms out there. I think they're, they're complaining. Trying to fire us. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I had a buddy who was like, ah, you're racist. You Boston racist. Yeah. Then. He refused to come to my house. Nah. <laughs> Wouldn't you, come to my house. You see? And he's like, can you meet me at the train? He's like, I'm ner- how, how, how dangerous is it? This and I'm is, like this, that that's is real racist. racism. That's real racism. This, You're afraid to come yes. to my home because I live in a black neighborhood. This goes back to what I was saying. They have these feelings, so they put them on you. Yes. It I comes don't right like back. it. It makes themselves feel good. Uh, that's all it is. He's like, ah, can you meet me at the train? I'm freaking out. It's late. It's weird. I'm like, yeah. my girlfriend lives here. She's a 22-year-old white girl. Right. Right, what the fuck right. are you talking about? Ugh. That is fucking real racism. That's infuriating. Ugh. And you know what? You know another thing. I'll just get this out. I might, might have said this before, and stop me if I have. I'll be on stage at a comedy show, white guy, and mm-hmm. I say the word like Latino, and everybody goes, "Oh boy!" You can just feel it in the crowd. Those words, yeah. Here it comes. This guy's gonna say something awful, and it's like, no, 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 no. I'm not racist. Uh, you only think I'm racist because I'm white. You're right. judging me by the color of my skin. You're being racist. Right. Okay? Why? It's the same thing like like a cab driver sees a black guy and goes, I'm not picking him up. People see white guy and go, oh, he's racist. It's our cross. It's our burden. Right, it's our right. cross to bear. It's No one thinks of it because it's kind of meta. Being called racist is actually racist, and so no one right. actually puts it together. But assuming white people are all racist is generalizing, which is ra- what racism is. Right. Saying all black people are criminals, that's generalizing. That's terrible. Saying all white people are racist... Racism is a terrible thing. Being racist is a terrible thing, so just call somebody that is a huge insult. Right. So how is that not bad? I agree. Uh, boy, I'm fucking fired up. Yeah, we're all fired up. I, I just had a... What, 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 was, what did you say right before that? I had a thing that reminded me of a story that I wanted to tell, mm. and I lost it just yeah. like that. I have a joke in my act where I say I grew up in a black neighborhood and my bike got stolen a lot. And people are like, oh, come on. I'm like, should I, should I lie? It got stolen. I'm not saying... I'm just saying what happened. Right, right. And I'm the bad guy now? Right. Well, I have that story I tell in uh, my... But people actually always uh, sort of uh, laugh at it. It does, it does real well, I think. But they get a little weird. But usually they laugh. Black people love it. But uh, black people always like race jokes. This is me generalizing. But it seems like black people always like the race jokes more than the white people do. Because they're very nervous. Yeah, it's just nervous. But now I'm generalizing. So, who you know, nobody's perfect. Well, from what you've seen at a comedy show, right? I think that's that's fair to say. But I, I tell that story on stage. A true story. I was driving. This was uh, up in Boston. And uh, I had I was listening to Ben Harper, who's yeah. an African-American rock and roll singer. And I had a, I had a crank. I like my music loud. And uh, a, a black fella drove up next to me in his car. Not Ben Harper. Different one. And uh, he told me to roll the window <laughs> down. I rolled the window down. And he's like, he goes, that shit is hot. And I said, thank you, which is weird, because I don't play on the album. Right. And then he goes, is he a nigga? Oof. Which, which is a weird situation. Right. Because if a black guy says, is he a nigga, that means, is he black? But if a white guy says, sure is, it means uh, I'm a horrible person. Right, right. I, gotta, I can't just say yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he is a nigga. <laughs> right, so, I, right. so I said, uh, I said uh, he's, a, he's an African-American. And, uh, yeah. And the guy was like, I knew it. That shit's hot. And then he drove away. Wow. And I was like, do I pass? Did I win? <laughs> I think you nailed it. I, I, think I, I think I did all right. You actually went more PC. You didn't even say black. You said African-American. Yeah, yeah. I like to say, well, that's the thing. Some people give me shit for being PC. I'll correct you, let's say Oriental. But I'm like, I don't want to offend anyone. Which goes back, we've talked about this before, too. Yeah. I, I, I'm not I'm not looking to be edgy by saying the end. I'm just quoting a guy who was saying, and I want to tell the story. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want right. to offend anybody ever. The Bible stuff and the, I, I whatever don't stuff. I just pointing things out. I'm hoping everyone's enjoying it and being like, i got to listen more. i got to tell my friends yes. to listen to this. Yes. That's the, the hope. You, no one wants to I mean, Some people want to offend. They're bad comedians. Yeah, yeah. People that are trying to offend. They can't get laughed, so they have to get shocked. Right. Yeah. So I don't want people to be offended. I hope you're not offended, and I do apologize, but these are the things... But but just to everyone out there who's listening, it's not a – people hear buzzwords. They hear the word Latino. They hear the word pedophile. They hear the word, you know, Asian guy, and they just clam up. 
It's not all bad. Listen to the context before you get angry. You're not a hero. Right. You getting up and walking out is not a sign of like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm appalled and this is justice. I'm walking away. No, listen right. to it. You're, you could be completely wrong. Right. And for the most part, that's coming from the left. Yeah. From oh, liberals. Oh, it's, it's, all it's, the way. It's, it's very strange. All the way. Uh, ironically. And then the people on the right actually are racist. Uh, well, some <laughs> of them, yeah. So it's, it, it's like, Just there's kidding. no country. You know, I'm a man without a country. I don't know where to go. I right, mean, right. Know? Uh, what is I, don't, a, I don't really think that all conservatives are racist. No, of course not. Well, what uh, is a centrist? I heard you say that earlier. What the hell does that mean? It's someone in the middle, in the center. Oh, oh the huh, centrist. that makes sense. Yeah. Our friend Colin Quinn, he's one of the pure centrists yes. in this country. Very fair guy. True, A true centrist. Boy, that guy's I don't know smart. if he wants me uh, saying his politics on the air. Uh, I feel like he would say that. I would do, but I, I'm not him. How great would it be if he... he boy, if he, we're we going to get him this in. This conversation with him? Oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy. We're gonna we're gonna we'll, we'll get him in here. He's a good buddy. He, he just texted me. I feel oh like wow! I'm name dropping now. Oh hey, uh, a text. But, uh, boy, Christmas Eve. Oh, speaking of Christmas Eve. Sorry, I, I've I've led the last three, four things. Lead. I, I don't have I don't have much today. I, I feel like I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm I don't know what I'm doing. Oh boy, was that a black guy? Who was that? Uh, Someone just put their head in here. Are we in trouble? Jewish, Jewish fella. Oh good. A lot of Jews up here at Stand Up New York. Oh yeah. They're swarming the area. Lousy with Jews. What do you mean? That's a term meaning like there's a lot of them. Lousing? Lousy with Jew? You know, you say like, oh, this coffee shop's lousy with com- laptops. What? You never heard that? No, it's, that an, sounds, old, it's an old saying. It sounds very negative. It's lousy. It, that's why it went away. Oh, but okay. There's no, there's no negative connotation, but... Oh, I think it's lovely with Jews. Well, I mean, it is. there are lovely people. I'm just saying, lousy is the term. I think you went too far, buddy. Oh, jeez. You're suspended from the show for two weeks. Oh, boy. You said the N-word 13 times. I counted. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 13. It's like six. Ah! <laughs> But I'm quoting. Isn't it all right? The Jesus, N-word, now I feel guilty. I was N-word, kidding with you. Now I, I feel terrible. The N-word's like dog ears. You know, you say one, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. seven. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, then I'm way over 13. Yeah. Uh, um, but wait, New Year. I mean, uh, Christmas. Oh, it's Christmas Eve, right? If you're listening to this, I think we're going to have this out, Christmas Eve. Speaking of Christmas Eve, last a couple days ago, two days ago, I went and saw It's a Wonderful Life, Woo. one of my favorite movies, at the IFC Center in the West Village, and boy, oh, boy, Mark... What a thrill. Never uh, seen it on the big screen. Beautiful. Uh, best theater in New York, the oh, IFC yeah. Theater. It's theater number one, the big one, with the balcony oh, and the wow. curtains were there. Yes. I started It's a Wonderful Life, and I went there, and I was like, I, I cry every time I see the movie. Uh-huh. I'm a big, I'm a big, big girl. Yes. And uh, I love it. And the line when he says uh, to, my, to my big brother, George Bailey, the richest man in town, I lose it. Best wow. line. In the, I, got, I got the goosebumps right now just saying it. Yes. Best line in the history of American film. I cry. I'm just crying like a girl. Then the movie end, credits come. I realize I'm late for my gig. I got to run out and grab a cab. And then there's another line of people waiting for the next movie. I'm just jogging out, crying, red eyes, tears everywhere. <laughs> I got to try to hail a cab. I'm that guy that you see. Ryan Hamilton has a joke about it. You're just walking around the city sobbing. Yeah, you're that guy. And I, I go run over to the stand, and the stand is like the cringe humor, like this tough guy right, like comedy right. and i go in there all teary-eyed and people are like what's up with you i'm like i just saw it's a wonderful life uh, <laughs> and it is a wonderful life yes especially because of the movie it's a wonderful life it right. makes life wonderful yes tremendous movie and there's people out there that haven't seen it what oh, the fuck are you doing you gotta see it put on nbc tonight it's on nbc every year christmas eve put the motherfucker on there yeah. and, and just jerk off and cry have a good yes. cry yes it's nice to know because whenever you see someone crying in new york you assume oh boy Death in the family. His life fell apart. Yeah, life fell apart. Lost his job. But it's nice to know it was because of a nice piece of art. My life came right together. What a what a film! And uh, oddly, I don't know if we're talking about this. Another controversial. I'm going on a limb here. It's known as this great Christmas movie. Really, a huge disservice to call it a Christmas movie. It's just a good movie. It's a great movie about life whose climax takes place on Christmas Eve. Right. Aside from that. Not a Christmas movie. It's like calling Forrest Gump a Vietnam movie. Right. It, it's it, it, it's not a Christmas movie. Well, it's, it's a, Christmas time. Just the last scene. Is that it? Well, it's snowy. Pretty much. It's very snowy in the movie. The it, it, the movie takes place on Christmas Eve, but basically there's like 18 minutes of screen time on Christmas Eve, and the rest has nothing to do with Christmas at all. Oh, all right. It's just about life. Wow. And uh, what's interesting is uh, Donna Reed... Uh, the the lead, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, she uh she the, the female lead. She is um, uh she her daughter was at the theater and did a little Q and A before. What? 
it? Yeah, it was pretty exciting. Wow. Nothing uh, nothing too crazy there, but... Uh, That's pretty good. People were asking dumb questions, which was really annoying. Yeah, they always do. But, uh, boy, it was, it was quite a thrill. So I, I recommend... It does a two-week run every year. Oh, boy. And Highly I, recommend I love that people go to see it. Oh, my God. That's it was great. It's fun seeing it in a group. It's exciting. It's, yes. It's, and then they ask the, before who hasn't seen it on the big screen, and most people raise their hand. Then they ask who has never seen it. Oh. And a bunch of people raise their hand. And that gives me the goosebumps now thinking about it. I got the That goose. is great. I got the GBs, baby. What a nice community feeling that is. Yes. You know, coming together. And can you imagine, I would kill to see that movie for the first time again. Yeah. What a, what a spectacular feeling that you only get once seeing it the first time. I might have to go. I've never seen it on the big screen. I haven't seen the movie in 10 years. You should go see it, buddy. And uh, boy, it is tremendous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love those Q and A movie thing. I saw Louis C.K. Uh, he promote what do you call that movie? Uh, Hilarious. Oh yeah. And he played that in the big screen, and he was there and he answered questions. And I, I wanted to ask him a question, but I, I froze. Right. Yeah. It's hard. I wanted to ask him the question about it being known as a Christmas movie when it's really not a Christmas movie. Yeah. And uh, it actually came out in January. Fun fact. Interesting. Because they wanted, they thought there was too much competition for the uh, Academy Awards that year, that they thought they'd wait. Did it win? It did not. It, the movie called The Best Years of Our Lives won uh, everything that year. Interesting, because I've never seen that. Yeah, it's it's about coming back from the war, I guess. Ah, I well, think, you, uh, you got to give it to the war flick. Yeah, but It's a Wonderful Life had a lot of war references. But yeah. just, a, just a great movie and a great great time at the theaters. I love going to the movies. Love the movies. Yeah. It's uh, it's so damn expensive in this town, but I it every time is. I do, I love it. Yeah. I, I spend really- most of my money on movies. I saw Gravity in the theater, and that was a real treat. Yeah. Have you seen Inside Lewin Davis? Yet? I gotta see it. Gotta see it. I'm I'm going to New Orleans for Christmas, so I'm playing. I have nothing to do all day, so I'm going to see see a lot of movies. Are you leaving New York to see that New York movie in New Orleans? But what difference does uh, it make? You're at the, yeah, you're you're at the a, movie you're house, in a theater. I guess. Now listen to this schedule, please. Uh, well, it's too late now, but twentieth tomorrow, me and you, baseball tavern. Yep. Jumping in a car, big car ride. Big car ride. Love Me a car ride. A lot of time we got to love a car ride. We can talk with the best of them. Yeah, we're doing it right now, as a matter of fact. There you go. That was wow. a fart. Wow. That uh, was a real life. That might have been the first fart in the history of the show. First I, audible fart. Could you hear it? I heard it, baby. All right. Call in if you heard it. Loud and queer. Hey. Duck Dynasty. It smells like cum. Woo-wee. All right. <laughs> So yeah, 20th Baseball Tavern, 21st Fireman's Benefit in Long Island. Massapequa. Yeah, or as they say, on Long Island. I like to say on. I like it too. It's Cape fun. Cod, Long Island, I say on. On. On Staten Island? Or is that in Staten Island? I was on Staten Island. I would say on, I, I guess, but on. I would never go there, so it's hard to you say. You should go. It's not a treat. <laughs> the The ferry isn't bad. Yeah. Then me and you were driving back to Beantown, catching a flight to New Orleans, seeing the fam, doing some shows there at the Howlin' Wolf. Then, Foxwoods for New Year's, then back to the Big Apple. Wow. I got, I got, a, I got a crazy little schedule, too. I'm, the first half lines with you. We're right. Tomorrow, tomorrow our time. Oh, we're, yeah. we're, we're in the past right now. Yeah. Uh, we're driving, you and I driving from New York to Boston. Then mm-hmm. we're turning around, driving back to New York. Then we're turning around, driving back to Boston. Oh, yeah. Then I'm there for Christmas. Then I drive back to New York. I got one night at Caroline's. Woo! New York Comedy Wee. Club in the cellar. Hot That's night. A great night. I'm doing New York Comedy Club first, hosting Caroline's, late one at the cellar. Oh, then I got to get back in my car, I drive to New Hampshire, Wee. opening for DePaulo at oh. the Flying Monkey, December 27th. That's this Friday. Is that a rock club, I assume? I guess so. Mm. It's, oh, it's a little theater, he said. A little oh. music theater, I guess. Called the Flying Monkey. That's in Plymouth, New Hampshire. If you happen to be listening in New Hampshire, way up there. Then I got to turn around and drive back down to New York for the 28th. So. I'm putting a thousand miles in my car in the next uh, few days here. Well, you're getting some gas money from this guy. So Perfect. Don't worry about that. And Great. Can I, can I just say this? I know we got to wrap up. We got we got couple, time, baby. All right. Well, uh, these these gigs where you open for your DePaulos or me with Schumer or mm-hmm. Tom Papa or whoever, Colin Quinn, you sometimes sure. sing it, sister. Do they get easier? And and hold on, hang tight, hang tight. I all love right, working with right. these guys. They've saved my career. They paid my rent. These these headliners. Mm-hmm. But every time I get so anxious because I don't want to fuck anything up, I don't want to ruin it, I need to keep working with them. It's got to be their way, you know. You gotta, you gotta. The whole gig is just keep them happy, keep them happy. Yeah, it's not about you. It's not about you, right. which I'm fine with. It doesn't have to be about me. I just, I get nervous because they're the boss. Well, how long have you been working with Schumer now? Four years. Four years. Three. You four should years? be pretty comfortable by now. I guess I should. What kind of nut is this lady? 
Well, it's not her. It's just me. It's just I, I feel like as soon as I let that guard down, boom, I lose it. It's how, I had that with, with with Nick for years, and I still had it because I was like, this is all I have. I'd look at my calendar. But now you and I both, we have stuff going on. If 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 it happened, which doesn't seem like you're close friends and you're a great comedian, if she was like, fuck you, Norman, you're out of here. You're never going to work with me again, you fucking idiot. Right. You got money. You got you got gigs. You got, you got a career aside from there. But so you don't have to worry too much. It's not even about the money. It's about getting that... that f- Kicked out feeling, right? That's right. You don't more want the kicked what I, out feeling. Oh, that's the worst. I, I was with DePaulo. I was terrified for like the first year or so. Woo! So that's a that's a fear that you you can only know if you've done it. Yeah. Did I tell you my story about meeting DePaulo? Uh yeah, but I love it. Do uh, tell. I was uh, I was supposed to open for him at the Comedy Connection in Boston. Never met him, and uh, they asked me to two man show. Just gonna open for Nick DePaulo. Was one of my idols. Yeah. This is back in '06, and you were kind of the hot. Opener in I Boston. was a local guy. Yeah, yeah. I, was a, I was a kid. I had a lot of future. Uh, a lot of future? That doesn't make sense. A lot of promise. A lot of promise for the future. There it is. And we did it. Teamwork makes the dream work. And uh, I couldn't do the Thursday show because I had some other gig. Yeah. And uh, my buddy Owen, bonus, wonderful comedian, wonderful guy, good friend, he opened for him instead. And they were in the green room and Owen was like, hey, so Nick, how long you been now? Uh... And Nick goes, hey. We're not fucking girls. We don't need to force a conversation. You can just sit there quietly. Wow. So Owen calls me. He's like, don't try to talk to this guy. He's a real fucking psychopath. Ah, <laughs> yes. So I was like, oh my God, I can't talk to this guy. So I sat in the green room for four days, or whatever, three days, Friday through Sunday, in silence. Yeah. Just sitting there with my hands folded, looking at the ground. If he said something, I'd answer in two words or less. Oh, good for you. And hand signals and winks. And then at the end of the weekend, he was like, I like you. You keep to yourself and you got good jokes. You want to go on the road? Seven years later, still on the road. Well, I hate to say it, Onus's fuck up was your fortune. Yeah, it really was. It wasn't even a fuck up. He was just trying to make conversation. But boy, I, I, owe, I owe a lot to him. You Onus. That guy. And uh, that same weekend, uh, DePaul is on stage. Some guy answers his phone in the front row. Yeah. And Nick goes, let me let me talk to him. Let me get his phone. So he, the guy gives Nick his phone. Nick drops it into a pint glass of Captain and Coke. Woo! Does the rest of his set with this guy's cell phone. Just marinating in a Captain and Coke. Wow, it was amazing. And that's that doesn't uh, bode well for you, you know. You, no, you yeah. must see that, and you're like, oh, great. Yeah, it's all guy, true. I'm checking my back for a kick me sign the rest of the weekend. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, this guy's gonna give me a noogie and you know, rape me or something. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that got weird. Uh, what, got what else is going on, buddy? Anything else happening? We got we got a few more minutes left here. You got uh, anything else on the old list over there? Uh, let's see. Not much. Uh, I, I feel like I sparked all the uh, things. It was good. I, I didn't have I didn't have much, so I'm glad you did. Let me ask um, you this. Please. I just got a fresh haircut, and uh, oh boy, yes. How did we not get to the haircut? I felt so gay because I love getting my haircut. Ah, I don't care that it's a man. Yeah. I used to love having the. This is a weird feeling. I love. I used to get my haircut at a salon. The boys would make fun of me, tease me. I did that too. Call me a queer. They'd throw eggs at it. me. Yeah, my whole life. I put the robe on. They do the head, the massage, they, the yes. head, the, the shampoo. Yeah, Woo. Donna. Did you have Donna? I had Sheila. <laughs> Sheila. Oh yeah. She sounds so much less attractive than Donna. She was a large lady. Boy, Donna was something. Yeah. I mean, she was really something. I think she still cuts my mother's hair. That was my earliest masturbation methods, uh, methods, uh, memories. Uh-huh. Was she would wear the tights and her boobs would be right there. And oh boy, boy, I every I would get a haircut, fresh haircut, and, and there'd just be little uh, specks of hair all over my pillow because I'd go straight home and jerk off. Wow, interesting. Yeah. And uh, boy, I hope she's not listening. Or maybe, maybe I hope she is listening. Maybe I could. She's probably quite the cougar these days. Let me ask you this: uh, I used Hit to go me. to Supercuts oh. as a youth, like in my teen years. I thought your parents had money. I just was like, I need a haircut. I went and got a haircut. I didn't Jesus. think about it. I was a young, you know, young, dumb, and whatever. And I uh, would go to Supercuts because I need a haircut. And they would screw it up every time. I swear yeah. to God. One time a guy cut my hair. I swear to God he had Down syndrome. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> that is not a joke. I was looking at him in the mirror the whole time going, is he retarded? Was is he, he drooling? Not? A little. A little drooling. Thank God I had the robe on. And uh, he cut my hair. I, I had like a mullet on one side. The other side, I had like a, a mohawk. It was crazy. And I, you know, he's like, how's it look? I was like, oh, it looks great. And I went and like, I drove home and I cried. Oh, wow. It was bad. I was like 15. Yeah, people cry at haircuts. There's a high percentage of haircuts that result in crying. Because you, you're stuck with it. That's yeah, it. yeah, you're fucked. Yeah. Especially girls. They have it. Because a guy can always just fucking shave it all off right. and start from zero. Right. But a girl, you're, you're fucking doomed. Oh, yeah. And you pay the guy. So you feel like it's such an idiot. Yeah. I paid for this and I tipped. Ah. But here's the thing. I thought it was sexual because it was a woman. 
this is as close as I come to getting gay. This is a, like a like a sixty year old Russian man brushing my hair. I don't want him to stop. My dick is hard as a rock. <laughs> I'm well, fucking, uh, I'm drooling. I mean, this is, it is a pleasant experience. This is why you see those guys in the fifties. They get back in that chair. They got the hot <laughs> towel. They got the shave. They got the, you know, the the guy with the, the Frank Sinatra playing. You know, you you read a magazine. It's like getting a whore. It's like Mo Green. <laughs> Mo well, Green. What, what's what's the hot towel all about? I've never had a hot towel in my life. I'll tell you what it is. Yep, hit me with it. They please. put the hot towel on your face to open up the pores. Oh, the pores. And it makes it easier to shave. My pores are closed. Oh, uh, you got to open. <laughs> <laughs> Those pores should be open for business, baby. <laughs> oh yeah, Woo. good time. I, mean, you're, you, I love when they hike you up on that chair. You know, you're going up and up and Boy, up. Oh. <laughs> Woo, and they hit you in the back with that powder. Yeah, uh, we had different experiences. <laughs> oh yeah, I got shampooed and I got tits in my face, but no powder, no slapping. Man tits, woman tits. Donna, this uh, guy today. Oh I yeah, got one today. Okay. I, he could. Br- I would let a man brush my hair until I came. Yeah, I, I just I'd spend a day brush what? my hair, rub my foot. And what, what's up with that hot shampoo? You know, she's run my head. I'm, I'm, I, hot I'm, my, shampoo. You ever had gotten the hot shampoo and my, I'm like, let's come. <laughs> what? What are you talking? About? I get that. You know, you lean your head back and they go, how's that temperature? And you go, oh, it feels perfect. Oh, yeah, it boils your hair off. And she's massaging your head. You're like, do I have a clit? What's going on? <laughs> I'm in my own shower. I'm trying to recreate it. I'm getting nothing. Imagine but when a, she does it, whew. Imagine a clit. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, you can't massage it. You can jerk yourself off. Thank Christ. Thank but Christ. <laughs> It doesn't work. I get my girl to do it. She does it for like three strokes. I rub my girl's head for fucking three days straight. I don't yeah. eat. I got fucking. I'm I'm, I'm losing weight because I'm just sitting there scratching her head. <laughs> then I'm like, would you mind doing me? Yeah. Three scratches. We're out. Oh, that's a shame. And then I just. By the way, you scratch my head twice. It looks like a fucking snowstorm hit my oh, shoulder blades. Tell me about it. The, the <laughs> climax of it's a wonderful life. <laughs> hey. Speaking of which, you know they won the Oscar for best technical achievement because they they invented a new way to have film snow. Is that, that right? That movie, yeah. Wow. Before that, it was cornflakes painted white. Interesting. And it would crunch, and you'd have to redub the sound. Wow. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I got excited. Oh, that's a lot of work. Boy, I've had a boner this whole podcast. This has been one of the great ones. Yeah, I think so. I think we ostracized. Well, hey, look, we're being real with you guys. We're not giving you the phony pony, okay? So if you can't handle it, get out of the tub. This is... <laughs> This is realer than real deal Holyfield. Yeah. And you hookers and hoes know how I feel. Sing it, sister. Would I be racist if I knew that? Oh, 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 oh. The wolf is back. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. Follow us on Twitter. Write nice things. Hit us up on the email. What's the email, Joe? Oh, there's an email. Tuesdays with stories at Gmail. We got a couple nice emails. We never check it. We're going to start checking it regularly. Yes. Throw us an email, and uh, we apologize if we offended. And uh, But, uh, you know, that's the way we feel or whatever or we're, thinking. We're but good people deep down. I'm also a guy, and this is my, I like, this is my favorite quality in a person, and I, and I, I have it. I like people that can be swayed by an argument. If anything we said oh, offended I love that. you, give me an argument, and maybe I was wrong, and I'll change for you, baby. Yes, yes, I like that. And if you wouldn't mind sending a picture of your tits. <laughs> Male or female. If you have tits, shoot us a picture. Even if you have a picture of someone else's tits. Yes. Send those in. No, you can't do that. That's against the laws. Wow, we're not going to show anyone. I know, but I can't participate in that business. Well, just say it's your tits. There you go. All right. Steal a picture of somebody's tits. Yes. Say they're yours so I feel good. Send them on over. And remember, if it's your family member, it's okay if we look. You just shouldn't look. Right, right. And uh, all right, so at, at Tuesday Stories, tweet us. Jerk us off, send us tits. There you and go. And thanks for listening. And Merry Christmas. And thank you for listening. Oh, we God love you. Sakes. God damn it, we love you. Yes. Check out Stand Up New York and check out our websites for uh, dates. We might be coming to your town. <laughs> All right. Have a good uh, holidays, folks. Oh. oh, that was a classic. <laughs>